All right, so I want to welcome everybody back. So this is um, our 12th session of the Diabetes Prevention Program, um, Prevent Type 2. And so today we're going to talk about keeping our heart healthy. But before we start, um, let's just check in. Last week, you know, we talked about coping and triggers. Um, does anybody have any questions about last week's subject? Did anyone make any particular um, action plan last week to try to help with uh, your triggers and then the coping mechanisms for them? And if so, what went well, what didn't? I went to the grocery store and I got only the things I said I was going to get. And I have been packing my breakfast and my lunch, and I have stuck with it last week. And I did good yesterday and today as well. Hey, that's awesome, Sheila. That is great. And so, yeah, doing those things, you know, sticking to what you plan to go there to get, um, sticking with that list you made, whether it's mental note or in your phone or on a piece of paper, those things will definitely help us to stay on track and to avoid um, those triggers of things that can be found in the in the grocery store. And so that's an excellent way to cope with that issue. All right. So, you know, um, if you are at risk for type 2 diabetes, you're more likely to have problems with your heart and or your arteries. So it's important to keep your heart healthy. So today we want to talk about that, um, you know, why heart health matters, how to keep your heart healthy, and how to be heart smart about that. So the heart of the matter is your heart does matter. <laughs> you know, got this little picture up here in the corner, and um, it's the heart that's kind of broken. Um, but you can see all the vessels um, or a lot of the vessels in it, and, um, you know, that's what can really be affected um, by having a poor diet and having type 2 diabetes, it puts us at increased risk for um, poor heart health. So what are some of the problems you could have with your heart and arteries? Anybody want to take a shot? What well, some problems you can have with your heart or your arteries in your heart? Blockages, uh, anemia. That's correct. So blockages, which could lead to a heart attack or myocardial infarction. Mm -hmm. It doesn't pump the way it should. That's right. You can have pumping issues because it can get um, thickened or enlarged, what we call a cardiomyopathy, and it makes it um, harder for it to pump. You can also just have some chest pain. which is called angina. You can also have just sudden cardiac death, just where the heart just stops. And sometimes that can run in families. Uh, getting out of breath easily. Um, that's another thing that can happen. That can be one of the signs that you might have blockages in your arteries is that you get out of breath really easily, even with just normal daily activities. You can also have kidney problems. Um, you know, if you have um, poor heart health and um, you're not pumping efficiently, and then you're having, if you have elevated blood pressure on top of that, then you don't get good blood flow or perfusion to the kidneys. And so you can have a decline in your kidney function. Um, and that comes along with IBT as well. And then vision loss, again, because of the uh, lack of good blood flow to the eyes. Um, so some people will notice that they have numbness and tingling or pain in their legs and in their feet. And sometimes that's, um, from neuropathy. Um, and then sometimes it's just from peripheral vascular disease because there's narrowing in the arteries in your legs. And then, um, for men, a lot of times they might 
may be one of the first signs that they might be having issues with blockages is that they might have some trouble uh, with erectile dysfunction. And so that's always something to think about as well. Your heart's, you know, a pretty amazing um, organ. With each beat, it pumps oxygen-rich blood to every cell in our body, and every every cell in our body needs oxygen. Um, and that blood travels through those arteries. And when something goes wrong with the heart or your arteries, you know, it's a pretty big deal for your health. And um, um, we just talked about the problems that you can have related to that. So can somebody tell me what happens if an artery to your brain gets blocked? You can have a stroke. Stroke. That's right. You can have a stroke. And um, a lot of times we don't, you know, we might just look at heart health when it comes to these issues, but it's really just the arteries overall that feed all of the body. And um, you can have a blockage that can develop in the brain um, that could lead to a stroke because of loss of blood. And then you can also have what's called a hemorrhagic stroke, and that's where you have a brain bleed. And that's uh, a lot of times that's brought on by um, high blood pressure um, that can be associated with your arterial problems. So how do you keep your heart healthy? Of course, we know being active and as a part of our diabetes prevention program, you know, we highly encourage you to get 150 minutes a week of activity in. Now, whether you do that all in a couple of days or you split it up over three or four days or you do it um, every day of the week and you, you know, you do be that time up. Um, but it's been proven that that 150 minutes a week um, can definitely decrease your risk of cardiovascular disease as well as help decrease your risk of developing type 2 diabetes and it can help you bring your diabetes if you're already a diabetic under control. Um, reaching and staying a healthy weight um, that also helps your heart to stay healthy. Eating foods high in fiber with lots of vitamins and minerals um, that fiber actually helps to clean and to uh, catch all those cholesterols and fats that you um, might eat. So that's why it's good to maintain a high fiber diet and then you're able to expel it um, good when you have a bowel movement or something. Um, manage stress. Managing stress can definitely help to keep your heart healthy um, because it can help reduce your blood pressure. Stress can increase your blood pressure and so that's not... Um, not good for your heart. Somebody Can somebody tell me how quitting smoking can uh, help keep your heart healthy? Keeps the nicotine from binding to the arteries. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that's what causes a lot of it. Yeah, a lot of the, the trouble. Mm-hmm. That's, that's true. And another thing is when you're smoking, um, for those that might be a smoker or might have a family that's a smoker, um, you know, the chemicals that's in the cigarettes, whether it be nicotine and there's a few others as well, um, on your hemoglobin, which is where your oxygen sticks on your blood cell, those receptors will pick up those chemicals um, instead of picking up the oxygen that it's supposed to. So it's just slowly, you know, depleting your oxygen supply um, to your body. And with la a loss of oxygen, you know, just think about it. If you take a rubber band or you take a thread and you wrap it around your finger, you're cutting off the oxygen. And what happens? You know, that tissue turns blue or purple because it's lost its oxygen. Um, that's, you know, slowly, what you can just think about that you're slowly doing to your arteries um, if you're smoking as well. Um, how about decreasing salt and alcohol intake? How do those help keep our heart healthy? Well, the salt, by decreasing salt, that helps to reduce our blood pressure. And so, um, you know, if we re reduce our blood pressure, then we're going to have better flow of the blood through our body to all those organs. And then alcohol intake, period. There's actually been numerous studies, and there's not been one study that's ever been found to show that there's not one um, bit of alcohol that's not um, 
harmful to your body in some way or another. And so it's really best to avoid it if you can. So unhealthy fats, what can they do? They can harm your heart and they do harm your heart if you eat them in excess. And there are these three types of unhealthy fats. And so you can see um, this here and you can see on the uh, saturated fat. And a lot of people don't realize, especially if you eat the skin of the chicken and turkey, which I know is really good. I like rotisserie chickens and, and um, fried chicken. You know, that's what makes it so crunchy and good. But that's really where all the saturated fat is at. Uh, the unhealthy fat in um, in your chicken and in your turkey. And you might think you're doing better by eating chicken and turkey, but if you leave that skin on there, you're really not doing yourself any, any good. And chocolate, of course, we love chocolate. Um, it's got saturated fat. And then you can see here the other coconut oil um, meat gravy. So if you make a, a gravy after you've um, fried your sausage on the weekend or and you use that grease that that's got your saturated fat in it and then just high fat meats and I don't mean just meats that you go and you get from your butcher or your local grocery store you know and you're going to cook them on your grill this is also referring to processed meats so if you look at your um, bologna or your hot dogs sausages um, um Prepackaged ham, turkey, all of that, those have your saturated fats added in on them. And then lard and butter and palm oil. And then you see your trans fats. Those are in a lot of your processed foods. So think about anything, your chips, cookies, um, cakes. And there again, shortening because that's in a lot of those um, processed foods. And then stick margarine. There's something about the stick margarine that they add in it that um, causes it in particular to have trans fats. And then again, we can look at the cholesterol. And uh, the skin is in that again. Egg yolks. Um, we've heard the talk for years about egg yolks and I know it uh, are eggs in particular and they go back and forth but um, they do have a lot it's not doesn't mean that you don't need them you do need some cholesterol your body does need some cholesterol and your body does help make that and so you don't have to uh, give it a whole lot of excess cholesterol that's when we develop issues high fat dairy and then liver and organ meats have a lot I'm sorry if y'all hear my doggy back here. She's she's nervous when it starts thundering. So let's look at the healthy fats. Um, healthy fats are really good for your heart, but they're also high in calories, so you have to be careful on the amount that you eat of them. And so um, monounsaturated fats, such as, such as avocado, a lot of your uh, different nuts, almonds, cashews, peanuts, your olives and the olive oil, you know, I, you, I know you've heard for years, cook with olive oil, cook with, with olive oil, and it's really great, um, but you can get too much of it in sesame seeds. And then your polyunsaturated fats, and this is where, um, you know, this is a good one, but you can see, again, margarines in this list, but it's the soft margarine in the tub, not the stick one. The stick one is the one that's um, not so great for you. Um, sunflower seeds, your oil-based dressing, those types of things, and then your omega-3 fatty acids. And I know tons of people, most everybody's probably heard of omega-3 fatty acids and how good they are for you. And you can see the vast majority of the things that you get those from are actually fish, but not all fish have them. It really needs to be more cold water fish. Um, and then you can also get it from walnut, flaxseed, and flaxseed oil. Believe it or not, my husband used to, and he didn't have a cholesterol problem at that time. He wanted to try to prevent it. He would get flaxseed oil, the liquid, and he'd turn it up and drink it. I don't know how he did that, but I was proud for him that he could do it. But to me, it's, uh, and I tried it, it tastes like the little paints that you get in the, you know, paint by number kits. It tastes like they smell. So if you want to try that, go for it. <laughs> So, let's see. On page three of the handout, 
We already talked about that. But if you printed out your handout, your participant handout, y'all um, don't forget to look at these. Um, if you're participating in the program, print them out. They've got some really good information. It's got most of what we go over in the program class, uh, but not all. They sometimes have some extra things in them. So be sure you're looking at those. And so we want to look at replacing um, high fats with lower fat food choices. So who can give me some ideas of what they think you would need to replace your gravies and creamy sauces and stuff with? Or your cheese sauce or your ranch dressing, cookies and cake. What are some things? We can replace our dressing with like something like lemon. Hey, that's great. Yes, you can mm -hmm. definitely replace it with just a fruit, um, a fruit juice like lemon, squeezing it over there. So use Greek yogurt based things for um, replacing. Yes, that is right, Dr. Rayford. You can use Greek yogurt um, to help even maybe make your dressings um, if you want to use that in place of a um, regular full fat dressing. A vinaigrette dressing. That's right. Oil-based dressings are much better choices than um, than your full fat, like ranch dressings and um, and Thousand Island. Although I love Thousand Island, most of my family likes ranch, but I like Thousand Island too. What else? So we'll just see what. I Go ahead. Maybe adding some like salsa style food to yes. your Yes. Yes, you could add some salsa. Make some fresh pico de gallo, um, some fresh salsa. Um, just be careful on your salt that you add to it. Don't make it too salty. So you can see here what you can try instead of um, regular gravies and creamy sauces. You, you could do some fat free gravy, some maybe use fat free cream of chicken soup. Um, that non-fat yogurt or fat-free um, sour creams. You can use marinara sauce in place of your ranch. Um, you can, again, the light ranch, or you can use the oil-based dressings as we talked about. Um, you can use margarine oil or oil-based spreads. Remember, though, to stick with the, um, the soft tub ones. Um, in place of cookies and cakes, you could try out some yogurt and granola. You can make some homemade oatmeal, um, cookies, I'm sorry, and uh, make some granola bars even. In place of your lunch meat, you could try deli meat where they have, where they grate it off for you. Um, low fat or fat free hot dogs. And then there's the non-fat yogurt or frozen yogurt. And then in place of chips, you can uh, get low-fat chips. There's a lot of baked chips options now. And you can also make yourself some baked potato wedges. And we're just going to look at some potential uh, replacement meals, like a makeover meal. This looks wonderful. Who doesn't love spaghetti and meatballs? And then you've got some nice garlic bread out to the side. But that's really uh, dense and probably in several things we don't need. One is, is carb loaded, too many carbs. It's probably got a lot of salt intake. Um, and so those, uh, a lot of that's going to hurt two different ways. All those carbs is going to shoot up your sugar. And then, um, and then you're going to have a lot of salt that can increase your blood pressure and make for poor heart health if you eat a big meal like that. And so you can make that over. Not that you still can't have um, some spaghetti and meatballs, but you need to cut back on a little bit of the pasta and the bread and try to put some greens along with it. Um, have some fresh uh, vegetables there. And you can even do like a whole wheat pasta. That would be better for you. Who can tell me what this is? Fish, fried fish. I'd say it's probably like some crab claws or something like that, maybe, or clam or something calamari. that's fried like that. Calamari, maybe. Yep, that could be it. Yep. We all, you know, love to go to our fish and steak houses down here in the south, myself included. I love some good fried catfish every now and then. Um, but again, we can see how this is uh Three quarters of everything on that plate is deep fried. And so um, lots of calories there from the oil intake from um, from frying lots of calories just from the oil itself. Um, 
And so you can make that over. You can still have you some seafood. And you can have some shrimp instead. And you can still do a little pasta with things like this. You can see they've got some orzo in here. And it looks like they've got some multicolor um, little um, tomatoes in with that. And then some grilled zucchini. And I bet that would be great. And you could even squeeze some lemon over it, like um, Giselle said earlier. And that would really bring out some flavors in this dish. And meal number three. It's probably the most sold meal um, of all the fast food restaurants, I'm sure. And that um, looks like probably maybe a, I don't think it's a, it might be a Big Mac. Um, but so what would, what could we replace this with? Kind of make it over. Veggie burger. That's right, a veggie burger. Hey. And you can, so, and some people do a mixture. Sometimes they still might want a little meat with their veggie burger, but have veggies in it too. And so you might use something like turkey or chicken meat um, and then throw you in some black beans and onions. You can throw in carrots. Um, nowadays, you know, they've got the um, cauliflower. You can mix all that in. So really lots of things you can mix in with that corn. And then you have you some sweet potato fries and you can bake them or even better yet, you know, now, you know, I'm sure the vast majority of people probably have air fryers and that is a wonderful way um, to make you some French fries. Mine's got a basket and it, it turns over and over so they don't see it and they all get crispy. Love to do fries that way. Snack number four, how could we make this over? What could you have in place of your desserts? These look wonderful, I won't lie. But we know there, there can be consequences to eating like this all the time. So how, how could we replace this? Maybe an apple or sarnola and yogurt. Mm-hmm, yep. Anybody else? Oh, so we can see here we've got some probably fat-free um, yogurt, frozen yogurt, and then they've got some fruit on top of it. And then I love this over here to the right. I actually want to do this. I don't know why I hadn't thought of it before, but I love bananas and I love strawberries. And who doesn't like chocolate and strawberries? Um, just a little bit of a drizzle over it. You're not just dunking the whole thing down in it. Um, you know, and just make you like a little kebab with the fruit and just drizzle you a little chocolate over it. And you can still get some of the chocolate you might want or crave, but in a um, less amount. And so less calories. All right. Tricky traps. So we're going to read over a couple of scenarios and I want you all just to kind of take notes in these scenarios. Look at what are the high fat foods this person is eating. And then what are some better low-fat food choices this person could make? And then what are some of the traps that may be associated with unhealthy eating habits? What are you seeing their traps are, their triggers, like we talked about in the last, um, in the last session? And then what are some alternatives for avoiding these traps, okay? Y'all ready? Here we go. So tricky traps. Let's look at this. Susan loves to relax in the evenings and watch her favorite television shows. She is often exhausted at work, at working at her factory job, and she feels like she deserves to relax in the evening. So the first thing she does when she gets home at 4 p.m. is to grab a large bag of chips and makes a fried bologna sandwich. Then she heads to the couch to eat and enjoy her favorite shows. There is usually some kind of meat and potatoes or hot dogs with french fries around 7 or 8 o'clock. And then around 10 on her way to bed, she drinks a large glass of whole milk and grabs some chocolate chip cookies from the cookie jar on the counter. All right. Who can tell me what are some of the things you, you've noticed? Rick, can you notice some of the traps she has in here? First thing I see is she's eating a lot. She is eating a lot. That's right. Anybody else? Eating while she's watching TV. Mm-hmm. What else? What's something else she's doing that's not good for her? 
eating and going to bed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's definitely eating late. So she's eating frequently, and it's she's got a lot of caloric intake in what she's eating. And um, she's eating late. And she's already said she's not getting much activity because she's tired when she comes home, which is understandable. And she, and, potentially, she may also not be eating during the workday. So she may also be delaying her hunger to the evening. And by the time she gets home, she's very tired and also very hungry. And hence, you see all this eating. Mm-hmm. Yep. She's done, went so long, she's like, I have got to eat. And then everything looks good to her, and she just eats, and she wants to eat again. And that can be one of our traps is delaying. Um, if we're not careful, it's, it's good to have some, you know, some intermittent fasting here and there. And that's something that a lot of people are doing now. But you do have to be careful and not um, delay yourself so much that you overeat, you know, to the point of, as what you can see here, she's she's had a whole day's worth of calories just since she's went home, if not more. So, um, and then all in a short period of time, and then she's going to go to bed. And so we know, um, and that's not going to be great. All right, another tricky trap. Who wants to read this one for me? I'll read it. Okay. Arthur is the father of two boys working a full-time job as a manager of a car dealership. His day is filled with meetings, helping customers, and taking care of employees. During the day, he usually orders lunch from McDonald's, consisting of a Big Mac, large meal, with a chocolate milkshake. After work, he picks up the kids and drops them at soccer practice. Now, dinner is usually something from a drive through consisting of fried chicken fingers, potato wedges, and a soda because he is too tired to prepare dinner when he gets home. All right. So who can, who can point out some of the issues that Arthur is dealing with here? Some things that can be harmful to him in trying to prevent type 2 diabetes. He picks up lunch from McDonald's consistently. Mm-hmm. That's one thing. He usually also um, gets, like, fried chicken fingers, potato wedges, and soda for dinner, which mm -hmm. is the same thing just about for lunch. Mm-hmm. So, fast food, um, lots of fried um, foods that he's eating there. Um, he's usually, it sounds like he's, um, always eating on the go to, he's, he's not cooking at home or preparing any meals. So, you know, he's taking his kids where they need to go. Um, and then, you know, he's topping off that Big Mac meal with a chocolate milkshake. I can just imagine how many calories that is with, the, with just, and it's a large Big Mac meal with a chocolate milkshake. Um, but, you know, he's not fitting in any time for himself as far as to take care of himself. And so, um, you know, over time, these routines that we get in because we're so busy and because we don't make um, focus time to take care of ourselves and we don't make focus time to get that activity in, and we don't make focus time to um, eat better meals you know, that becomes just a tricky trap, you know, just a, you know, we're like a hamster on a wheel and just going and going and, and it, um, you know, it just becomes commonplace to us. And we, we don't think about it until, you know, we go to the doctor and then we get our, our blood test results from our healthy you every year. And then we find out our cholesterol is through the roof and our blood sugar or our A1C is up. And so that's why it's important to really, um, take a step back and to look at what we're eating, being purposeful about what, what we are eating and about the amount of activity that we're getting in. And so we've come to that time to where we want to think about making our action plan for this next week. And so um, you want to spend a few minutes um, each week making a new action plan, as we talked about um, last week. 
Um, keep in mind what worked and what didn't work well for you since your last session. And are there any changes that you want to make? Um, keep in mind what we've discussed today about keeping your heart healthy. And, you know, when you're doing these action plans, whether you're writing it down on this or whether you're making a mental action plan, just remember to keep it realistic, keep it doable, keep it specific for you and, and be flexible with it because things can change. Um, you'll have things that will get thrown in your way. And um, remember to focus on the behaviors you, you want to encourage and you want to improve and try to have fun with it. Um, I do want you all to, um, that are participating, you remember I talked about printing out or looking at the participant hand guide or, um, the participant guide on page six, just, just some self-study, look at all, the all about fats and cook the healthy way. And it's got, um, different things, you know, instead of cooking this way, then cook this way, and then you can make your other ideas. So that's on page six of your handout. So y'all just look at that through the week as well. And that can be very helpful for you in setting your action plan. It gives you ideas of things that you can do. All right, does anyone have any questions? Any comments? No? Well, I want to thank you all for joining us this afternoon for our Diabetes Prevention Program session. We will meet again next Tuesday at 5 p.m. Um, please remember, if you're participating in um, our sessions, to send your weight and your minutes of activity to Diabetes Prevention at nmhs.net. I enjoy uh get to see all the hard work that you're putting in. It's definitely paying off. And I want to uh, say congratulations to um, all the efforts you're putting in. All right, everyone have a great night. We'll see you next week.